Hello, Daniel. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Lots so, of energy. Keep the energy. Yes. Keep last the energy. half an hour, last speech. Let's rock it. That's exactly what I was thinking about the energy. You know, when uh, you can't say words all you want, but uh, if your energy is not matching what you say, uh, there's nothing that's going to go through who is listening. So, anyway, so I was going through so much uh, technological problem this morning. Um, none of my computers were, um, you know, hooking up to the uh, internet for some reason. And suddenly, boom, five minutes ago, I was helped with the, you know, this incredible uh, energy coming from the universe, getting that, I'm uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> so uh, thank you for inviting me, Daniel. Uh, I'm very honored to, to speak at this forum. 20 minutes is very short. Uh, my pronouncing my name takes longer than that. But anyway, thank you for the introduction. Very kind of you. Uh, for some of you who don't know me, um, I come from a humble family of uh, North African Berbers. Um, I was born in the back of a truck, French army truck uh, in the desert. My parents were going to, the, uh, to vote for their country's independence. And I suddenly decided to come to this world. Um, in my life, I had to go through challenges. You know, I call those little bumps, so mountains to climb, journeys. And um, the first journey led me to um, meet my teachers uh, in the form of bullies, in a form of racists in the form of all those negative individuals who uh, taught me great lessons. So I thank them. Um, which led uh, to a deep search for who I was, who I wanted to be, what was my mission, what was my purpose on earth? Uh, because we all here, uh, we're not here just to, you know, to, to do things, but we're here to be. Uh, as much of your listeners here understand that, uh, you know, when I say be versus doing, we can do, 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 and forget to be. So I, uh, like you said earlier, I went to, to uh, a lot to accomplish a lot of things, you know, those titles, incredible international titles that make you feel good, but uh, it's not really what uh, I'm very proud of. What I'm proud of is that I was able to find that second important date in my life. And that's where I find the day I found my mission, my, my purpose, okay? The first, we all know the first important date in our lives is the, the day we were born. The second is the day you find out why you're here. <laughs> and so uh, going through, a lot of work and a lot of uh, challenges, tribulations, uh, the joys of winning things and international titles and hanging out with the best actors, movie stars and, and the like, you find yourself in the corner still scratching your head and asking yourself, what the hell am I doing here? You know, is this my sole purpose to walk around and uh, um, as if I uh, was, uh, you know, it, this this ego, you know, uh, and that that body which I used as a shield to protect me from my self worth, and it, it, it was to me it was this learning process was a uh, was um, so powerful that um, it led me to question myself and. Um, and uh, I came out with this idea of thinking about this word, inner conflict, you know, because a lot of us, especially lately with this almost two years of incredible uh, challenges and turmoils, everyone across the world is going through, you know what I mean? Um, 
whether you think the pandemic is over or whether you think the pandemic is not over, we still have a lot to process. And as coaches, we are here to heal, not only the people we are helping, but ourselves because it's a process of healing ourselves that we have decided to do, or to be, um, that is to be the coach that we are. And in a conflict, it's something I went through a lot uh, for a long time in my life. And a lot of my clients who come to see me always go through that inner conflict. So I said, okay, let's try to think about inner conflict um, in a more positive way. And uh, let's find the opposite of it. What is it? Um, as you know, fitness was uh, the traditional traditional world of fitness is something I uh, I flirted around with for a long time in my life. Uh, very obsessive if we take it to a, an extreme. So the opposite of inner conflict, therefore, to me, came um, as inner fitness. So what is it exactly? Of course, I'm not gonna be able to describe this in 20 minutes, but I'm gonna do my best to share with you um, the, the, my own definition of inner fitness. Well, think of it this way. Um, we all are human, using energies, that is the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual energies. None of us has only one or two or three. We all have four energy reservoirs, okay? If one or more of those energy reservoirs are emptied or are depleted, then we start tapping into the second and the third one and the fourth. When you get to that complete tapping of all reservoirs, you hit what we call the low level of existence, where your behavior is erratic, when you're not sleeping well, when you're not eating well, when you're not exercising, when your thoughts are filled with anger. And as we all know, thoughts are what lead us to do and be things. The origin of everything is thought. It makes sense then to ask oneself, how am I feeling right now? Am I feeling good or bad? Because those are the two emotions that we feel, bad or, or good, those are feelings of, of um, anger, frustration, uh, fear, or peace, joy. Um, and that is to me what uh, the, the, the depletion of all these four reservoirs leads to. Uh, it it leads to chaos, inner chaos. So inner fitness is the equilibrium between all four reservoirs, hence creating your optimum state of inner fitness. So how does one do this? Uh, I heard the, the, the speaker that spoke before speaking about uh, mindfulness in uh, um, when you prompted the question, uh, what to do when you're stressed out? Well, stress is a part of us. The day or the minute we understand that stress is not an enemy, stress is a friend, stress is allowing to do and become things. And that is important to understand. Now, the question should be, how do you handle stress? It's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you deal with what happens to you that does. So when you feel stressed, you know, uh, I like to, you know, it's, I, I, I'm always amazed at how people think of stress. They only think about stress as a stressor, as a distress. But no one thinks about 
the good stress, you stress. This is the feeling of having a baby, uh, getting a nice, a good job, uh, getting promoted, uh, climbing a mountain, reading a nice book. These are the, the, what we call positive feelings, but also they can become stress. What is the difference between you stress and distress? Well, distress has very negative uh, physical and emotional ramifications. Okay, you stress cannot hurt you. You stress actually gives you energy to accomplish things. Like me, when I had to be uh, exercising every single day at the high intensity, how, where did I get the energy? Not only the physical energy, but we're talking about the emotional energy, the spiritual energy. You know, people think about fitness as a, just the, the, the body aspect of it, but no, it's not. So how do you deal with, with stress? Well, you don't deal with stress. First, you acknowledge that you have stress, then you surrender to it, okay? Just surrendering is not quitting. Surrendering is taking a step back, like in battle. What do you do? The soldiers are tired, they retreat, they rejuvenate, and they come back to engage in battle. Same thing, okay? Surrender, get back, and re-energize, refill these reservoirs, okay? And so that is important to understand that we are four parts being. We are, we are the emotional, we are, we are the mental, physical, and spiritual beings. And I call them the four pillars of mindful fitness. The four pillars of mindful fitness. In their account, uh, the first one being sleep. Okay, sleep. How many of us get enough sleep? And how many of us do really understand the importance of sleep? Yes. You read so many about, so many articles and you watch so many um, shows on it or you listen to so many podcasts, but something is missing there. And what is it? Well, almost every one of my clients, when they talk about sleep, they're freaking out. They're thinking about it in a very negative way because what the articles or the podcast mention is the ramification of lack of sleep, citing numerous physical and emotional um, ramification, negative ramification, if you did not get enough sleep. How about starting with sleep is not something you think about. Sleep is something you be. Sleep means get in your bedroom, lay down, get rid of all your devices. Most of us are married to our iPhones. Hence, most of us kick their partners to have their iPhone sleep next to them. So this being said, when you lay down, you're already getting rest. And thinking about sleep is gonna to lead to, to no sleep. You understand? So this is important to, to grasp this important fact. You're already getting some rest when you're laying down. As long as you're not, you're not distracted, you will fall asleep. That's a guarantee if you don't think about sleep. Now, new research shows that if you go to sleep between 10 and 11 p.m., that's the best, you know, and the chances for you to, um, get sick, uh, specifically getting heart issues, is greatly diminished when you go to sleep between 10 and 11 p.m. So that's sleep. Second, breathe. Well, how many of us do breathe and take deep breaths? Breathe through the nose. Um, I love this article I read not long ago about breathing from the nose, which is much more beneficial than breathing um, from the mouth. You know, most of us, uh, because of stress, you know, we are, 
and we don't realize. So learning how to do deep breathing exercises is a great tool to help with that emotional uh, reservoir, um, even the mental aspect of it too. Now, in that category of breathe, I put meditation and your colleague spoke about mindful meditation is great, but let me tell you something, my friends. Meditation is meditation. It doesn't have to be anything else. We give it so many names. You know, for the sake of this, I have a colleague, Dr. Dharma, who's a great, incredible person, author of eight magnificent books, and um, also the, the founder of the Alzheimer's Prevention Foundation, who speaks about meditation. And uh, when you say mindful meditation, um, he starts, you know, having a problem with it because guess what? When you meditate, you're already mindful. So why are you talking? Why are you calling it? mindful meditation. So I have a problem with that. Meditation is simply meditation. And again, meditation is you sit down in a quiet uh, room, close your eyes, or you can even keep your eyes open if you want to, if you can focus and just let those thoughts come. When they come, you just go back to your breathing. Thoughts are part of you, you can't push them away. Let me tell you this, you know, um, I spoke once to a spiritual teacher who meditated 50 years, and he said, sometimes I uh, break through my meditation two minutes later, and I, I call in for a pizza, and then I go back to my meditation. You know, so that's what I'm saying. We're making too, too much fuss out of nothing, because guess what? Meditation is just that, you know, closing your eyes keeping your eyes open, quiet pose, a, a, a quiet uh, room. You can even, listen, a lot of people have a problem with their meditation because they have to stand up, we have to get up, they have to sit somewhere before they know it they're in the office, they forgot all about it, okay? So I say to them, okay, why don't you outsmart your mind? And how do you do that? How do you outsmart your mind? Well, before your mind, wakes up and you're in bed, you're still in that zone, just close your eyes and do your meditation there. Don't go anywhere. Then go on with your business. See, that is very important to note, you know, that it is uh, important that to know meditation is just like sleep. It's not something you do, it's something you be. It's not something you do, it's something you be. Now, the third one being, I see a lot of chats, but I'm gonna continue with my thoughts. Um, and the third, hold on, I'm gonna bring down, okay. The th third one being um, eat, I call it eat in my book, Inner Fitness. It is your nutrition, okay? Uh, what if I said America is the place we eat a lot, but we are still malnourished. We eat a lot, but we are still malnourished. How can that be possible? You know, in other words, uh, we are as malnourished than people that don't eat at all, that are starving. Why? Because we eat the wrong things. We, are, we don't have enough nutrients. And of course, and I talk about that in the book. Now, the last one, the, the move part of it. Uh, again, a lot of thoughts about it, a lot of uh, you know, methods, a lot of uh, uh, school thoughts, beliefs. Uh, I believe in one thing. You want burn fat or you burn calories, you move. You eat less and move more. Whatever it is that you're doing, just get moving, you know? So depending on whether you want to become a Miss or Mr. Universe, that's a whole different story. If you are doing exercise to get healthy, I have news for you. You can just get around and do your 10, 15,000 steps and eat less. 
And of course, I have clients who want to become, you know, Miss World and Miss whatever. It's fine, but I talk about exercise in a in a in a way that people understand that exercise is not again. You be fitness. You don't do fitness. The minute you start thinking about doing something, there is that word effort. And us, our minds, they don't, our minds don't like the word effort. When you do effort, when you do, uh, you, you, you say you have to do this. Will someone tell you, you have to do this, hence you won't do it because it's not suggesting, it's telling you to do it. As coach, you know, a lot of coaches like to say, Okay, go do this. Well, no, you have to suggest the idea that fitness is good for you, but ultimately it's your choice. Okay, so these are the four, um, the four pillars of mindful fitness. Uh, of course, you read the book, Daniel, The Inner Fitness. My book, Inner Fitness, is far more than a fitness book. It talks about it debunk this phenomenon about self-esteem and self-worth. For a long time, we thought that self-esteem and self-worth were the same and they're not. Why? Well, let me explain to you this very important truth. Self-esteem, esteem comes from the word, the Latin word estimare, which means to estimate. So self-esteem is you estimating who you are based on what you know of yourself and what other people tell you. And the result is low or high. Someone can come in the room and you're perfectly okay and say, Daniel, you look like you gain weight and you've been dieting for the last two months. How are you gonna feel? Low, right? Someone else comes and says, 10 minutes later and says, Daniel, you look fantastic. All of a sudden you're like, oh. Or someone says, hey, Cindy, your dress is beautiful. It looks great on you. You felt shitty five minutes ago. And now because someone says you have a nice dress, you're happy. Oh my God, right? It's, it, self-esteem can be burst or boosted Anytime, anywhere, by anyone. See what I'm saying? You can be, you can have high self-esteem and then all of a sudden, boom, phone call, down. Self-worth, let me tell you this, my friend. Self-worth cannot, you can't give it away. No one can take it away from you. Self-worth indicate that. You have won the biggest battle ever. The biggest challenge, you already had it. And that is to be born. You have fought against 600 million sperm in your mom's womb and you won. I won, the next door neighbor won, the Pope won, the president won, that we are all same. We are not superior or inferior. We are just different. We are not superior or inferior. We are just different. And that, my friend, is self-worth. When you wake up in the morning and you take your two finger and say, this is the bad Daniel with high self-worth, with self-worth, connected to it, his self-worth. Or this is the, the Daniel that is, you know, you know victimized, uh, um, always angry, the negative Daniel. Which one are you going to choose to go to work with? Of course, the positive Daniel the one that has self-worth, no matter what's gonna happen during your day, no matter who is going to be there to try to put you down, no matter what you're gonna be thinking. That is my friend, inner fitness. Perfect, Nordin, thank you so much. That, you very was, well. that was like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session I felt. Thank you so much, Nordin. Um, I saw yeah. some questions in the chat. I saw some yeah. questions in the chat. So, yeah, I see a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, 
So Romeo was stressed between, uh, is that for me? No, that's not for me. Um, I see. The last one, do you know the story about the Shaolin monks? Yeah, How their practice right came about for Mary? What is meditation? Meditation is just that, accepting who you are at the moment, being in that place of love. If love, Ekatoli, one of my favorites says, fear resides in the past or the future. Love resides in the present moment. Therefore, when you're meditating, you in love. If you meditate and you find yourself irritated, then you're not meditating. You know what I mean? Meditation is sit within and accept whatever is going in your mind and just connect to the present moment that is your your breath your breath happens in the present moment or let me tell you this how many of you think that our body physical body has been here all along it's never been in the past or the future it's been here right when you touch it that's the present moment present moment right so that's one of your questions um yes we believe in meditation that's right as long as you find yourself in the present moment where everything happens where you quit that illusory world you are in meditation life is a big meditation it's our monkey mind that decides to go there or there there or there, think this or that. Um, when, when can there be something such as too much love? No. And you know what? See, when I moved to America, oh, I loved, I barely spoke English, but then I loved how this, this English, uh, the American language, I love America and I love the rest of the world. This is amazing how they always open door for cop outs. Like um, when somebody's mean to you, they'll say, well, it's tough love. No, no, there is no, no tough, there's no soft, there's just love. No, 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 it's a cop out. Or somebody wants to break out with you, they'll say, oh, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. No other language allows for that kind of cop out. You can't, in French, on peut pas dire, we, we can't say, je t'aime, mais je ne suis pas dans l'amour. It doesn't exist. You can't, you can't get away. See, a lot of, no, to answer the question, there is not too much or too less, um, too little. It's just love. Um, Okay, what else? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, want... perfect. Yeah, thank you so much, Nordin, uh, for the speech. And thank you for so much for that energy you bring in as well. On oh, my yeah. side, my neighbor is currently drilling the wall. So <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me right now. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. I love you all.